In today's video we will be looking at speakers loved by some and considered very boring by others. As always, staying open-minded is crucial, thus I was intrigued to form my own opinion. Without further ado, let's have a look. In terms of the build quality, it's good for ELAG, but to be honest, not on par with competitors such as Wardle, Triangle or even Q Acoustics. This is evident in for example inexpensive speaker terminals, a cheap looking sticker, a low quality plastic puzzle around the midwoofer and I'm pretty sure plastic Twitter grill. Also, the vinyl wrap leaves a bit to be desired. Despite feeling quite pleasant to the touch, the texture looks a bit unrealistic under the light. That said, the overall appearance is satisfying and holds its own, especially in given color choice of light wood with the white front. It almost always presents well and this is no exception. Furthermore, I really enjoy this exceptionally smooth finish on the front, a nice touch in the form of chrome surround around the midwoofer and the implementation of front baseboard, which is quite intriguing as well. Some will also like this unusual Twitter waveguide, though truthfully it looks like it was not so well copied off monitor audio. Anyway, let's focus on the most important. There are quite mixed reviews on the speaker, so how would I describe the sound signature? Well, overall I can hear a blend of neutrality and darkness, with a touch of sparkle in treble. Notably, when comparing measurements to my main speakers, Quadro Platinum Plus 2, this ELAC aligns remarkably closely. Indeed, even after first listening, I felt both similarly lean towards neutral side of sound. With that, consider limitations of measurements conducted in my listening room. In reality, the Quadral Platinum Plus 2 comes out with more power, bass and generally lighter sound. Nevertheless, I'm getting off topic since they are from two completely different shelves. What's interesting is that whereas I generally perceive the sound of debut reference to be slightly on the dark side, the treble here is notably lively, which contributes to very good sound imaging, with phenomenal separation between all of the subtle effects in the music, such as pops and clicks, distinctly pronounced, giving a listener the overall sense of detail and richness. That being said, the higher frequencies are not totally polished, they are at the same time slightly cheap, exhibiting a sort of rustling. Still, this doesn't lead to the listening fatigue, unlike the piercing sharpness of rivals, like the Wartel Diamond 12.2s or Bowers and Wilkins 606. As for the mid-range, despite measuring quite linearly, I found the sound to be just a bit muffled. Don't get me wrong, vocals usually come out as bold and easily heard, but I can't help to feel they lack some realism. Though actually, my theory is the issue lies within the combination of the midwoofer and Twitter. To me, it feels like they are not working seamlessly with each other, playing a bit too separate, which is why performance doesn't feel wholly natural, not as smooth and realistic. And whereas the sound stage is in order, with a proper depth and localization of the instruments, I can hear some limitations in scale and dispersion, but that may also be connected with mentioned lack of integration between drivers. When it comes to the bass, it remains even, clean and full, offering both punchy and relatively deep low frequencies. The amount may not be overwhelming, especially in the lowest range, but in itself it's not an issue, I would say maybe more so in regards to the other parts of the frequency range. Oftentimes people criticize the speaker for sounding uninspiring and too flat, and I can at least partly understand this way of thinking. That said, objectively the overall performance is good and most tracks sound well balanced, which is not so easy to encounter in this class. The cheaper Alag WB6.2s, which I previously tested, may provide it a bit more intriguing, energetic, though perhaps less mature sound. Likewise, most competitors usually provide with more sparks, such as Wartel Diamond 12.2s with a warmer mid-range and cranked up treble, or Q Acoustics 3030i, which sound condensed, may provide a slightly more captivating experience to some. But because of this unique 
quote unquote reference balance, I would rank the Elec debut reference slightly above mentioned speakers, yet also giving them the same 4 star rating. All in all, for example, the 4.5 star Bowers and Wilkins 685s or Cat Q150s also offer a pleasing sound signature, but on top of that, some very unique traits that I missed even after switching from my pricier quadrals. Don't get me wrong, Elas has created a solid neutral speaker, but in a way I feel more could be done without getting off this road, in for example improving driver integration, dispersion and high frequencies quality. To keep things in perspective, we are discussing speakers in the 400 euro price range. This model is in the end commendable and as of now remains a strong contender among new speakers of similar size. But enough of my take, show your thoughts in the comments and suggest me next speakers to test in the near future. If you enjoyed this review, visit my new website mReviewer for exclusive written reviews with high resolution images. The link is in the description. See you in the next one. Peace.